Hello my friends and welcome back to my painting channel and today on this painting video we are painting this horrific looking Oni from the Asami core box of the Malifaux miniatures game. You might notice that I'm going to try to avoid calling this one by its name because it is quite a complicated name so I'm just going to get straight into the uh, painting and for this I am going to paint the skin tones quite a bright pale sort of colour. So we're going to start off with a pale flesh colour and just going to cover over all of the flesh areas so that is the arms and the face. And for this one what we're going to do is by starting off with such a pale colour we're going to build that up so that it becomes quite a nice bright sort of very very light toned pink colour. That way then we can use the hair as a really dark contrast but we can also build a lot of colour and things across the clothing. So once I painted the skin tones I'm just going to use a red wash. So for this I'm using an army painter but you could use a caribou crimson from Games Workshop uh, from the Citadel paint range if that is your preferred wash. And once we've done the wash, what you want to try and do is just take your time and really sort of try to get into these little gaps. So use the very, very tip of your brush just to paint around and into the gaps around these little holes and the areas that she's got around her face here. So what I'm doing is, as you can see, I'm just painting these little bumps and these little ridges individually as well, just to create an element of... Um, sort of like an element of depth out of that as well. I'm trying to take my time and just catch the very very sort of like raised areas and with the face is quite a lot of details so it can take a little bit of time uh, just take your time try to be as careful as possible um, and try not to get the the, uh, the pale color that we started with that we painting back up try not to get that into those cracks and into those grooves as you can see you just want to try and catch the raised points here just like this so that it's building that tone and that depth then so we've got the shade sitting in uh, the, the shade sitting in the cracks while we've got the highlights on the lighter area sitting up in those um, those cracks on the face. So you just want to try and do this across all of the face. You also want to do this across the hands as well. So as you can see on uh, this character's arms, you can see that there's quite a lot of tone and definition. You can see where the wash has sat. It's left some lines and things going across the arm. So you just want to paint the raised areas like this while leaving um, an element or leaving the darker area of that red sitting into those, cre uh, into those creases. Um, and the same just across the knuckles and the hand here as well. So just take your time, like I say, and try to catch as much of the raised area as you can. As you can see, I'm using quite a watered down paint as well, so sometimes this will take multiple layers, and that's great, um, because it will allow your, um, your paints to have a smoother finish when you're done. So once we've done with the pale flesh, I'm just going to move on and use light flesh as well. So this is just going to highlight the colour and highlight what we've already painted. So again, just trying to catch as much of the raised area as possible. But what I'm trying to do here is not paint as much of this on as we've already done with the pale flesh. It's pointless painting uh, the exact same thing. So I'm just trying to catch the most raised points from this as well. So just the very edges of the knuckles, the very tips of the wrists and things like that. And just one line across down the... Uh, uh, down the arms and things where you can see um, the raised point. So just trying to catch the very extreme points so that it uh, it stands out and it gives that depth and that, that highlight to what we've already painted. This is a really, really lovely miniature as well. This one is from, as I say, the Malifaux box game. Um, and, and she's very, very horrific. She She's really, really, um, <laughs> when you look at the face and things, she's a really horrible, horrible looking character, which is great. Um, so I'm just going to move on to the claws as well. So with the claws, I'm just starting with a bone white. And this color is a nice creamy sort of color. So this is like a creamy white texture. And it's a really good sort of base color as well. Um, I'm just going to carefully as well do the teeth as well at the same time. Um, and as I say, very, very carefully because this is where things can get just a little bit sort of um, complicated. It's very, very fiddly. Uh, once we've done the skin and I've got the base colour to the nails all sorted, I'm just going to cover the hair. For this I'm using a, uh, a black, so for this with the Vallejo black that I'm using, this is quite a matte black. So once this dries, it'll dry into like a really sort of matted down effect. Just be very careful going across where the hair meets the skin or meets her head. 
um, because we're using such a dark color to contrast between that really light skin and the dark hair you don't want to get the dark hair or the black onto the skin as well because it could be a little bit of a pain to try to fix that up so just be careful going across that head that, that, that little area there Now while you're painting the hair as well, you just want to be careful to make sure to paint down the sides as well because she does have a little bit of hair just pulling down on both sides on the left and right and there's a little bit just going down across her chest as well. So just take your time with this because the claws can get in the way a little bit. So just try to be as, as careful and as gentle as possible getting in there to do that. Now for this particular painting, I'm going to use really, really vibrant colours on the clothing um, to, to make her stand out, um, especially against the really, really sort of like dark colour that we've got with the head. So I'm using a squid pink for the dress um, and then I'm just highlighting the, uh, the claws as well. So whereas I said about the claws, we started with the bone white. Then we're going to use an Alfric Flesh, which is a lighter version of Bone White. This will allow these claws to stand out a little bit. And while I wait for that to dry, I'm just going to move on. And I'm just going to use that red tone that I used earlier on the skin. But we're just using that now across the pink. And as you can see, this is going to sit in all of those creases. So you can see where all the creases then will stand out a lot on the miniature. I'm also then just going to use a black wash. Uh, for me, for this one, I'm using a Vallejo black wash, but if you are a Citadel user, a Null Noil would be perfect here as well. Uh, it will do exactly the same job. I mean, the model is already black. What I'm pretty much doing with this is just making sure that I cover any areas that I might have missed because with the hair being as, as textured as it is, uh, some of the paint might not have sat quite neatly into the recess points. So this wash will fix anything like that that I may have missed. It's just about tidying things up. So as I said with the clothing, trying to make things as bright and as vibrant and stand out as much as possible. For this I'm using a heavy violet. So we're going to use a pink inner layer with a nice purple outer layer for the clothing. And this is going to make her really, really, really vibrant as well. It's going to give her a really nice contrast, like I say, against that dark, dark hair. Um, and it's also going to make her look very unique and individual indeed. This is a little bit different to the box art. I think on the box art she's wearing red. Um, but I didn't want to paint all of the clothing in red. I like to paint things just a little bit different for myself. Um, and just so that they stand out on the table and when I display them they look entirely my own as well. Um, so you don't have to follow this guide ex exactly in terms of the colours. Um, but this is just how I wanted to paint her. Um, and as I always say, you know, you can paint your miniatures however you like. They're your miniatures, you paint them. However, if you want to do it the box art way, you do it the box art way. If you want to paint them more vibrant, then you guys go ahead and enjoy yourselves. So yeah, just be careful not to get any of the purple on the hair. Um, and with this one, I'm just moving on to use a purple tone wash from the Army Painter. Again, you don't have to use that particular paint. Um, there are quite a few different um, did quite a few different shades and washes out there from different manufacturers. I think that the Citadel one would be a Drooky Violet, which would do exactly the same as this, as you can see. It will just create darker patches in the creases. Um, and if you're a Citadel user, a Drooky Violet would be perfect. That would do just as much for you. So it's the same, same kind of thing, uh, just a different manufacturer. So what I'm doing just to make those claws really, really, really pop, I'm using um, a very edge highlight now of something called Rotten White. Now Rotten White is part of the Game Effects range and this is a very, very vibrant white. So this white really does stand out. It really does sort of like, um, uh, to, it does really show off. It's not just white, it, it seems to be really, really vibrant. So I'm just using this as a very edge highlight to go just across the very edges of those nails, across those claws to make them stand out quite a lot. Now from there, um, obviously because we've done the uh, the hair so dark, we want to try and give it a little bit of definition but without losing that darkness. So we're using a heavy charcoal for this. And I'm just lightly dry brushing this across just so that it creates a little bit more of a tone to it than it just being a flat black colour. Um, just being very careful and just pretty much doing this across the top area, almost as if that's where the light is kind of hitting it. And again, just to give a little bit more difference and a little bit more definition to that hair, using a very, very thin brush, using a very, very uh, like small, fine detail brush. So for this one, I think I'm using a brush number zero. I'm just going to look at and trace 
one or two of the hairs that she's got going across the side and across the top because there are one or two loose hairs and I'm just going to paint those with a stonewall grey so just painting those with sort of an in-between grey now that will make those hairs really stand out but it also creates that element of like depth um, and it also allows it to make her look a little bit like she's got one or two little grey patches appearing uh, which would be a really cool look for this and what I'm doing with that then is I'm just using the same colour I'm just doing a little bit of a dry brush just across some of the very very tips the very edges and just across the back bit I mean you can dry brush the whole thing if you wanted um, but I think less is more with this kind of highlight because you don't want to go too extreme and by hand painting those little um, individual um, grey hairs um, it's going to create a, 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 a real um, like a little bit more sort of like of a, a character to it so more of an individual character something that you can see that you spend time sitting down and really working on how to paint and things like that so from there, going back to the squid pink that we used originally on the inside dress, uh, I'm just painting over the raised areas, leaving the red in the uh, in the recesses, in those grooves, so the creases that we were talking about with the way that the dress is moving and the clothing is moving. So I'm just painting this across the top end. So we're just painting this over the um, over the, the, the top of the creases so that the, the shade sits in those creases then. And from there as well, we're just going to add, an, uh, add a highlight as well. So using that squid pink, we're going to add a little bit of elfic, f elfic flesh to it. Uh, about 50-50 mix would be perfect. And what that's going to do is that's going to create um, more of a more of an eye more of a highlight, allowing you then to create that difference between the shade, the base colour, and the highlight as well. And I mean, you could be as extreme as you want and you can go to extreme edge edge highlights. If you enjoy doing edge highlights, you could even go another layer up and add more uh, Alfred Flash into it so that it creates a little bit more of a highlight again. Um, but I thought that one was fine for now because we're gonna do something a little bit more fun with the dress later anyway. So we're doing exactly the same thing on the cloak, just going back to that original heavy violet and painting that, as you can see, just across the raised parts of those folds, so those creases. With the way that the dynamic pose of the model is standing, the clothing is is, is moving across in sort of like a, a motion. So we're just painting those raised bits just to get that element and that um, illusion of that motion coming through as well and again the depth as well so i mentioned that we're going to do something really really fun on the inside dress and this is kind of where we're at now so we're using a very dark brown now for this you can use um as i'm using a dark rust you could use a dryad bark you could use a rhinox hide you could use any of these sorts of colors that um that are really good sort of base colors for dark browns and pretty much what i'm doing i'm using that really really thin brush again so i'm using that um, size zero brush and I'm just tapping this one so I'm just instead of tracing lines or following lines as you'll see I'm just tapping gently 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 tapping and the reason why I'm doing that is because when I'm looking at a lot of paintings I'm looking at a lot of images of sort of like um, Japanese style painting and things like that they don't paint the twigs and the sticks like just lines they seem to be sort of dotted because they use the very tip of the brush when they paint so to try to mimic that onto a miniature, which is quite complicated anyway because of the size in, just using that tip of the brush to just dab and just tap, and what that's creating is an illusion almost as if like the paintbrush is, like it's not just lines, it kind of allows you to create like twigs, um, and so it should look like that. As you can see, I've used some really thin uh, parts to the twigs, but I've also added some thick bits as well because you kind of want a little bit of, um, uh, a variation you don't want it all to be exactly the same sort of thickness and things like that because that creates more of the illusion and from there moving on and just doing a little bit of uh, cherry blossom so again using the very very tip of the brush and I'm just putting dots uh, around in sort of random areas towards the edges of the um, the twigs and things like that I'm using a carmine red for this one um, there's a lot of different uh, reds that you can use uh, but the carmine red is a good starter for this now what I've done with this is instead of going to a pink because I didn't want the pink to be the same pink as what I've used for the uh, the dress I've added a little bit of that creamy highlight elfric flesh into the carmine red to create a slight 
uh, pink colour that is different and varies to the pink that is in the dress. Um, you could use one of the skin tone pinks if you wanted to instead, uh, but just by mixing it, it kind of ties that colour into itself because you're using the original base carmine red, so by doing so then it means that the colours should blend a little bit better together um, and create it, uh, make it a little bit nicer on the eye as well. Just be very careful with this sort of layer as well. As you can see, you don't want to get any of the paint on the cloak. So once that's dried, just going to go and add a final bit which is very 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 small bits as you can see tiny dots here using just the highlight layer so just that elfic flesh I'm using with the very very tip of the brush and I'm just kind of dotting that on the inside of these sort of cherry blossom and the inside of these little red patches and things just to create so that we've got the red then we've got the sort of creamy pink and then we've got the really really highlighty white as well just just in these little areas here now to move on and do something a little bit more um, not so much difficult but a little bit more creative what I'm gonna do is I'm using the original color um, of the heavy purple the heavy violet sorry and um, what I'm doing I'm just mixing a about a 50 50 mix of purple ink from Dallaroni. Now, if you haven't used inks before, these are an amazing way of boosting the vibrancy of your, uh, your your colors and your miniature. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing this purple ink together with the heavy violet, and this is creating sort of like a highlight. So what I've done, I've watered this and I've thinned this down a bit so that this is becoming a little bit of a glaze. Because with inks, when you paint them, they actually dry thinner than they look. So when you paint them on they look too bright to begin with and then they dry down really really nicely so they have a very thin layer. So what you can do is you can put this on multiple times until you gain the vibrancy that you want or you can paint it in sort of stages so you can paint um, like I say in the layers you can paint a whole layer then a part of the layer then just a tiny bit of the layer and create your own blends. So what I've done is I've done a couple of layers of the 50-50 mix and then I'm using a highlight layer by adding more of the ink into the original purple so that this becomes brighter as you can see. And then I've done two layers of this as well. So I've done two layers of the, of the highlight of the Vallejo Heavy Violet and Purple Ink and then two layers of the 30-70 mix as well. And the reason why I'm putting multiple layers in is like I say, when it dries, it dries quite um, quite thin so the more layers you put on the more vibrant it becomes and the more vibrant it becomes then that gives you the option to really add that top layer then of just the glaze so this is what I'm doing here I'm just using that final layer of that purple ink as a glaze and what this is going to do is going to give a really nice transition a really lovely blend between the base color of that heavy violet through to a really nice highlighted purple ink but it's not gonna be you're not gonna notice your brush strokes or anything like that it's just gonna be a really smooth transition between that darker area to the lighter area as you can see and again you can add as many layers as you want like I said I've used two layers of each so two layers of the 50-50 mix, two layers of the 70-30 mix, and then two layers just of the glaze on its own, just of the ink on its own, um, because that's how I felt it would get the most color out of it. But that's completely up to you. You can keep going with the layers and you can see how vibrant and how much you want to push those colors as well. It's entirely up to you. It's your miniature, it's your painting. You can do it however you like. And for one of the final stages, I'm just adding um, some blood for the Blood God from Citadel, which is the um, technical paint. This is purely optional. You don't have to do this and ruin all of the hard work on those nails. Uh, but for me, I just wanted to make her look really horrific and just add a little bit more horror into the uh, into the mix. We've painted her so bright and lovely that that horror element should be quite nasty as well to, to, to have that vibrance and that um, contrast. And there she is all painted up. As you can see, I've put her on a sort of burnt out sort of Japanese base. 
Um, and if you notice as well, in between the claws, I've also used some of the UHU glue mixed in with Blood for the Blood God, just to create that element of like stringy, bloody um, entrails and things like that. I also have a video on how to do that if you want to know how I've done it. But that's her. You have to let me know what you think. Let me know if the ink looks really good, if the vibrancy looks good. And let me know what you think of the colour choices. And as always, my friends, thank you very, very much for watching.